Are you ready to level up your vocabulary? Today, you're gonna learn 10 vocabulary phrases that I use every day, and you should too. Hi, I'm Vanessa from speakenglishwithvanessa.com, and like always, I have created a free PDF worksheet with all of today's important vocabulary, definitions, sample sentences, and in this free PDF worksheet, there is a quiz at the end of the worksheet. I don't always do this, but this time there is a special quiz for you to test to see if you can really remember how to use these vocabulary phrases that I use every day. So you can click on the link in the description to download that free PDF worksheet plus quiz today. Let's get started with the first phrase that I use every day. I'm going to tell you the sample sentence and I want you to guess what you think this phrase means. On a roll. I'm on a roll today. I got everything done on my to-do list and it's not even lunch yet. What do you think this means? <laughs> this lovely phrase, on a roll, means that you are on a streak of success. <laughs> I have been productive all morning. I got everything done on my to-do list. I can't believe it. I didn't get sidetracked. I didn't procrastinate. I'm on a roll. If you like to watch sports, you can also use this phrase. You might say, they scored three goals in a row. They are on a roll. Yes, success. Vocabulary phrase number two that I use every day is ahead of time. Take a look at this sentence. I try to make my kids lunches ahead of time, but I often just make them the morning of. What do you think this means, ahead of time? This means that I try to complete their lunches before they actually need to be finished. So this means I'm thinking ahead. Maybe I will pack their school lunches the night before, but really the reality is that usually it happens in the morning before they go to school. But I try to do things ahead of time. Expression number three is to get out of hand. Hmm, are we talking about something escaping from my hand? Take a look at this sample sentence. Sometimes during the week, dishes and laundry get out of hand because we're so busy. What do you think this means? Well, we could switch one word in this phrase and I think you'll be able to guess. What if I said, during the week, dishes and laundry sometimes get out of control because we're so busy. Well, you can get the idea that there are dishes on the, in the sink, dishes on the counter, there's laundry in the basket, maybe there's laundry even in the washer that hasn't been dried yet. <sighs> there's a little bit of chaos because things get busy during the week. But we can use this great phrase instead, at least boost your vocabulary while you're talking about chaos. You could say, dishes and laundry get out of hand during the week. We can also use this to talk about people or places where people are involved. So take a look at this. The kids ate the whole cake and the plate of cookies at the birthday party. After that, the party got out of hand. <laughs> you can imagine crazy children after that type of experience, or you might use it as a warning. I don't want the party to get out of hand, so just eat one piece of cake, please. The next phrase that I use every day is, it's too bad. <laughs> Take a look at this. It's too bad that we don't have a maid who can help to clean up our house at the end of the day. <laughs> so at the end of the day, my family has cleaning time. We have a couple cleaning songs that we play and everyone helps to clean up the toys or the dishes or whatever might be lying around making a mess in our house. But often during this time I say, it's too bad we don't have a maid who could help to clean up our house. <laughs> This phrase is just something used to express regret. Obviously, when I'm talking about cleaning up, I'm a little bit eh, joking. I'm saying this in a lighthearted way, but we can also use this in more serious situations as well. If your tone of voice is more serious, you could say, oh, it's too bad that we elected someone else who is incompetent. <laughs> If you're unsatisfied with your country's politics, you could use this phrase to talk about a serious situation, which is politics, in kind of a more lighthearted way by using this phrase, oh, it's too bad we elected someone else who is incompetent, someone else who's not going to be able to do a good job. What a regret. 
The next phrase that I use every day is this one, when the time comes, or sometimes we add another word, when the time comes for, take a look at this sentence, when the time comes for Matilda, my baby, to go to preschool, our house is going to be very quiet. So she is my last baby. And oftentimes during these times of transition, I think about this. Uh, when she goes to school, it's going to be quite a different life. Uh, well, we can use this phrase, when the time comes for Matilda to go to school. Well, I'm not really talking about a specific date or year, we're talking about time in general. When the time comes for her to go to school, it's going to be different in our house. You can also use this to talk about your English learning journey. I'm learning English, so when the time comes for me to go to the US for vacation, I am going to be prepared. Or I'm learning English so that when the time comes and we have some English speaking clients at work, I'm going to be able to talk to them with no problem. You don't know exactly when that time will be, but you will be prepared when the time comes. The next phrase I use every day is some fresh air. <laughs> I've been stuck inside all morning. I need to go outside and get some fresh air. Right now, my kids are outside playing. They are getting some fresh air. Do you know what this means? It just means going outside. Usually it's kind of laced with the idea that you need some kind of relief. When you get some fresh air, it helps you to feel better. Maybe you feel less stressed, you feel more energized, you feel relaxed. I need to go outside and get some fresh air. Talking about getting fresh air, the next phrase goes along with it. There's something about, take a look at this. There's something about going outside and getting some fresh air that just makes me feel better. Do you think that I know exactly why fresh air helps me to feel better? No, I don't know exactly why. There's something about fresh air that helps me feel better. Okay, I'm talking about when something has the ability to influence me, but I can't really describe it. There's something about fresh air that just feels great. You might even use it to talk about my English lessons. There's something about Vanessa's English lessons that I just love. Maybe you don't know exactly why you keep watching my English lessons, but it's hard to describe and it influences you. There's something about Vanessa's lessons that just makes me want to come back again and again and watch them. I hope that's true. <laughs> the next phrase that I use every day is, come to think of it, come to think of it. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> we'll take a look at this sentence. Come to think of it, it is snack time, Let's go eat something. Maybe like your kids, my kids are always asking for a snack, but I try not to let them eat a snack all day, all the time. We have kind of snack times. It's not extremely strict, but if they ask me for a snack and it's around 10 o'clock in the morning, that's generally snack time. <laughs> and they say, mom, I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. I need a snack. I might say, well, come to think of it. It is snack time. Let's go eat something. So here we're talking about something that just appeared in my mind in the middle of this conversation. I wasn't thinking, snack time is coming soon. I'm going to prepare a snack. No, my kids asked me for a snack and I just remembered. Oh, come to think of it. Oh, look at that. It is snack time. Let's go eat. So it's something that just comes up in the conversation. I want to give you another example for this. Last week, my sister and I were talking about my grandparents and thinking about them. And I said in the middle of our conversation, come to think of it, I haven't heard from my grandma in a while. Maybe I should give her a call. Okay, we were having this conversation about our grandparents and I realized in the middle of that conversation that I hadn't heard from my grandma. She hadn't called me for a while. So I thought, oh, come to think of it, I haven't heard from her for a while. Maybe I should call her. It just came up in my mind in the middle of the conversation. The next phrase that I use every day is to be spoiled. <laughs> Take a look at this sentence. We're so spoiled because our neighbors share good food with us. 
<laughs> have you ever had a neighbor bring you over some freshly made cookies or maybe some soup that they just made on a cold day? Ah. Oh. It's such a beautiful feeling. This is a way to truly show love, I think. <laughs> so for me, I have several neighbors that are constantly sharing food together. I feel spoiled, I'm spoiled, that my neighbors share such good food with me. What do you think this means, to be spoiled? This just means that I'm treated well, maybe even above well. I am pampered. Someone is taking care of me more than is even necessary. I'm spoiled. We do sometimes use this negatively for children. So if your child always asks for toys and every time they ask for a toy, you say yes. Anytime you're walking down the aisle in a store and they say, I wanna buy that, you say, okay. <laughs> and then they wanna buy something else and you say, okay, 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 okay. Well, you know what? Your children are spoiled. This is not a good thing. It's not a good thing for us as adults either. <laughs> but when someone is spoiling me by giving me food, this is generally just kind of a, a neutral or good thing. But make sure that you try not to spoil your children too much. We want them to be grateful for the things that they have. <laughs> The final phrase that I use every day that I want to share with you today is the fact that. Okay, we need to add this grammatically correctly into a sentence, so take a look at this. I love the fact that my neighbors support each other. Okay, yes, we're talking about a fact, something that is true, but look how this is grammatically used. I love, I could just say, I love that my neighbors take care of each other but instead I added the fact to kind of emphasize this is absolute truth. I love the fact that my neighbors take care of each other. And it's true, we often look out for each other and bring each other things, bring each other food, check in on each other, and make sure that each other are doing well. I love the fact that my neighbors take care of each other. Let me give you one more sample sentence with this. One of my friends is a vegetarian, which means she does not eat meat, and she told me this, my family has finally accepted the fact that I don't eat meat. Well, maybe before her family thought, ah, oh, this is just a phase, it will pass. <laughs> if you're a vegetarian, maybe your family said the same thing. <laughs> but she said that her family has accepted the fact that she doesn't eat meat. And now whenever she goes over to their house, they try to accommodate her in some way. That's very kind. They accept the fact that she doesn't eat meat. Well, congratulations on learning these 10 phrases that I use every day, and I think that you should too. The next step is to download the free PDF worksheet, which includes all 10 of these daily life phrases, definitions, multiple sample sentences, and drum roll, <laughs> a quiz to test your knowledge and see if you can actually remember all of these 10 phrases. You can click on the link in the description to download that free PDF worksheet plus quiz today. Well, thank you so much for learning English with me and I'll see you again next Friday for a new lesson here on my YouTube channel. Bye. But wait, do you want more? I recommend watching this video next where you will learn 10 other phrases that I use every day, including how to use the word thanks to be rude. Hmm? I'll see you in that video to find out.